Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore endure for Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our worthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infant mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. So the common redeemed servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Join on seeing your entrance in 892. Oh.
church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Join now in prayer, gradual Psalm 67 song. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make His face to shine upon us. Let your way be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people's praise you, God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon her. Let the peoples praise you, God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God our God shall bless us. God shall bless us, let all the ends of the earth fear. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's first epistle to Timothy, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. First of all, then, bears that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please rise for me.
Amen. Join us here.
For the big stuff, like the healing of the lepers, yeah, we might manage to get our act together and raise our voices in thanksgiving to God for a day or two anyway. But no, it doesn't often last. Soon enough we forget to live every day in thankfulness to God for saving our sick child or delivering us from cancer or heart attack or stroke. For a time when we bother to pray, we may begin with thanking God for what He has done for us. But sadly, it doesn't last, think, think, it doesn't last and it doesn't take long for those heartfelt prayers of thanksgiving to mumble out into nothingness. Yes, we might get, to get, get it together with big things like health and healing for a time, but then there are plenty of even bigger things like the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of eternal life that we receive without a word of thanks, crossing our minds, let alone making it onto our lips. On a day like today, we may remember the Lord and give thanks for all of His benefits to us, pondering them in our hearts and opening our lips in thanksgiving and praise to Him. But no, it's not something we do every day. Even though the Lord blesses us with countless gifts, even before we open our eyes each morning, could you imagine if others saved up their thank yous for all that you do for them for the one day of the year? How would you feel if every time you did something for someone, they simply acted like they deserved it, or worse yet, just grumbled on and on about what you hadn't given them, or what you hadn't done for them? What would you think? They only ever told you what they wanted, and what they wanted you to do, with never a word of thanks for what you had given and done. I don't know about you, I may not have a, but I may not have a raging fever when it comes to thanklessness, but all this makes me feel just a bit warm, and a touch clammy this morning. No, I don't lead the thankful life that I should before God. I receive so much good without a thank you in my heart or on my lips, and certainly have not, like St. Paul, learned to give thanks in all circumstances, even in hard times, when why and how come, O Lord, come most quickly to my lips. A year and a half of COVID-19 and all the tiresome things that have gone with it have made that perfectly clear to me. Giving thanks in the midst of a pandemic? Yeah, that's made it clear that the thanklessness pandemic is not just raging out of a control out there, but right here in my heart as well. Thanklessness. Yes, there's been an ongoing pandemic of it, ever since the dawn of time, which is very sad when you think about it. But it does highlight the grace of our loving God all the more beloved. Because no, He doesn't do what you and I would do with such thankless people, as the likes of us and the rest of mankind. He does not withdraw His hand and take everything away from us. No, His hand remains perpetually open. Richly giving and pouring out not only what we need day by day, but so many other good and beautiful things. Food, clothing, house and home, family, friends, and all that we need to support this body of life. And yes, He continues to give all those things to us. And here, forgiveness, life and salvation. Yes, He keeps giving it all, even when we don't receive it with thanksgiving or thank Him for it. But this, beloved, is why we see Jesus over and over again giving thanks to the Father throughout the Gospels. Even as He gives thanks, as He takes the bread and blesses it before our eyes at the altar this morning. As the Son, who is one God with the Father, and shares all things with Him, He has no need to thank the Father for anything. As the Son, all that the Father has is already His. But as man, He receives all things for us, and so also thanks the Father in our place. Jesus gives thanks on our behalf, as He gives thanks that we might join in His thanksgiving. As Jesus takes the bread at the altar and gives thanks through His Word this morning, He brings us into the thanksgiving that He as man makes for us. And as we receive His body and blood, He makes His thanksgiving our own. And so let us give thanks to the Lord our God, beloved, because it is right to give Him thanks and praise. Let us come to the altar with loud voices and join in Jesus' thanksgiving, asking Him to forgive our thanklessness and make His thanksgiving our own, as He once again shows us here that he is good and that his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God which has the long stand in your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, the life of our last name. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people of God. For the richness of this creation, and for His grace to sustain what He has made, and the bounty of resources to sustain our daily lives, and for the good fruit of the earth by which we and all creatures are fed and nourished, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For the commands that protect us against harm, and guide us into all that is good and pleasing to the Lord, 
and we've lost the Lord's and Lord forgiveness in life. To encourage to share this blessed work with those who do not know the Lord, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government that order in our land and in the world, for those who lead us in this nation, for all leaders of all nations, and for the blessing of justice, the protection of life, the promotion of virtue, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our life together as God's people in this place, for the church throughout the world, for the missionaries planting new churches, and for our unity of doctrine and life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer illness of body or mind, for those who sorrow at the loss of those that they love, for those near death, and especially for our brothers and sisters, Lars, Her, Juan, Joyce, Dave, Nancy, Barr, Mike, Bob, Don, Faith, Laura, Annette, Frank, Eric, Debbie, Betty, Ron, Janelle, Amy, and for all who suffer in this, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Communion of Christ's body and blood, for faith to receive this gift with joy, for the will and desire to mend our sinful lives, for a grace to show forth in our lives the fruits of Christ's redemption, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For authentic all hearts, that we may not forget the poor and those in need, for generosity, that we may supply from our abundance those in want. And for the ties and offerings to bring gratitude for all God's good gifts, let us pray to you. Lord, have mercy. In faithful remembrance of the saints who went before us, for grace to rejoice in the mercies of the Lord showed to them in their lives, for the promised day of reunion, when the dead of Christ shall be raised, and we shall join them in everlasting light and life. Let us, keep, let us pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. In your hand, dear Father, commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. This remains with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the seed of the Spirit present. Your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit. 
and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet your great mercy upon the salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Keep us firm in the true faith through our days of pilgrimage. And on the day of his coming, we may together with all your sins celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Join us in your closing hymn in the parade under 95. Amen.